Right, well half term is pretty much almost over and what a week it's been. Weather wise it's been off and on but the sun's out now which is nice apart from the fact that I'd nearly roasted and so that's why I've got a bottle of water with me as you can see because I don't want to die of heat during making this video and also to let in some breeze or air into the garage whichever you want to call it I have two of the doors open but that's not important right now but this week it really has been a blast been to the gym three times this week because I have now joined it to get some exercise obviously because it's good but as for transporting boys it's just been really amazing caught a test train with a DRS class 37 on it caught a heritage convoy as well and finally for the first time excuse the ice cream man the S dot drag with the 20s on yes and you'll find a video on that on YouTube in fact you'll find videos of them all on YouTube <laughs> I've also caught a pair of DRS 20s on the nuclear flasks at my local park genius Right, sorry about that then, off camera I got interrupted by my mum. Brilliant. But anyway, as I was saying, also caught two Dionys 20s on the flasks. You'll find a video of them on YouTube as well. And today I got two Network Rail 97s on a rail tour and 31 190. Brilliant. But also, a new model train or locomotive should I say and it's made by Batman as you can clearly see there's no prices for that and I have actually had a break from Batman for a while so it really is nice to have something other than just Hornby and this locomotive is as you can see by the writing on the box it's a class 20 and this particular class 20 is 2136 in BR blue livery as you can see it has a 21 pin decoder but I don't really care about that decoder Duh. 21 pin socket mm. but then I don't really care about that anyway because I don't really use DCC and this class 20 although it doesn't mention it on the box but it should really it has the domino headboards as you can make out just about there as you can see now there is a story about these class 20s with the domino headboards because originally I was going to try and get hold of one of these in Ralph Rake grey livery. The problem with that is they are harder to get hold of because being discontinued no model shops have them in stock and they very very rarely come round on eBay. There's one on there at the moment but it's a Chinese website. I'm not having a go at anybody, but I'm not going to buy something from an overseas website that will take me ages to get here just for that particular model. And for some strange reason, the ones with the head code discs are more easy to get hold of. Why I'm not too sure, maybe the ones with the domino headboards were more popular. But to be fairly honest, I have a class 20 with domino headboards and I'm happy with that and to be fairly honest I'd rather own one in a livery I quite like because I really do like the BR Blue livery some people out there won't like it I know that but I really like it because it is in a way more colourful than the Ralph Freight Grey if you think about it I'm not saying I hate the livery because it's a very nice classic livery well, for being classic anyway. But colour-wise, it's not really that colourful unlike the BR Blue. Because all the Ralph 8 Grey livery is basically, well, grey. With yellow ends and a red frame. That's all it is, basically. There's not much to it, and it's not really that colourful. But some people like it. And this is the third Class 20 that I own. And it's the second one I have in BR Blue, because I have two in BR Blue and one in BR Green. 
And what I plan to do is buy a fourth class 20 with headboards or head cap boxes in BR green. So I can have two blue ones and two green ones. And that will just look epic on the layout. It really would. Because you can never have too many chopper, as I like to say. But another thing that's really ace about this is actually the delivery service. I know it seems weird to say that, but I ordered this on Wednesday. You may be thinking, okay. And it's arrived to me on Thursday. I didn't even have to wait a day for this. I know it seems hard to believe, but trust me, that is true. In fact, I took some photos on Twitter and I made a tweet about it. At first, I received it about 8 or 9ish in the morning. I received a knock at the door and there was the postman. <laughs> that was just really random, me imitating the knock at the door. And at first, because it came in a white packet, I thought it was something like me and my sister ordered. Because you know what women are like folding clothes these days. But when I looked close at the label, it actually said the place where I got this model from, which was, or is should I say, Peter's Spares. And so because I was excited, I opened it up. So I wasn't going to leave it in forever, obviously. And that is just an incredible service. In fact, I think that needs a round of applause. Well done, Peter Spares. In fact, I think that should get into the Guinness Book of Records for the quickest time in dispatching a parcel and getting to someone's house. But anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get it open and see what it's like. Because I've only just got around to opening this. Because I didn't have the time to do it yesterday. But I've managed to do it today. <laughs> that rhymes, in a way. So, <laughs> it's the new Batman packaging, as we are all used to by now. But to be fairly honest, I am not really that fond with it, to be honest. Because, well, it's not ideal. And it's not amazing, it's not incredible either. Considering the fact that not only Batman used this, Hell can actually use it now. They've replaced the fun packaging with this. And Hornby now use it. Though, why Hornby had to introduce it? is pointless because they don't use it as much as they should because they're still using their polystyrene packaging. If you're going to introduce a packaging you use it more than the other packaging you're going to use if you know what I mean. But anyway, some people like it, I don't but that's my opinion and not yours. <laughs> so on the back we get the brief history of the Class 20. Now we all know the brief history of it. They were built at Vulcan Foundry Works and they were known as English Electric Type 1s until Tops came in and reclassified them the Class 20. They're also nicknamed Choppers because of the sounds that the engines make and there are 28 of these preserved which is really good and they're still in service today. DRS owns some and Harry Needles Railroad Company owned some XDRS ones as well, which are painted orange. Though why it's called Railroad Company, I can't quite understand. Because Railroad isn't an American term. It should be called Harry Needles Railway Company. But that's a rant for the future. And there are some Class 20s that now run on the London Underground, painted in... London Underground livery to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the said underground. And there's two painted in GBRF colours. And there are actually some Class 20s still operating on the main line in BR Blue. Which is really good. But anyway, that's enough brief history of it. We'll put the box to one side. Then we'll take out the plastic casing, packaging that I like to call the glazing packaging also the people like to call it the pass the parcel packaging or block of ice it's got loads of names but then to be fairly honest it's just packaging at the end of the day 
So, here's the instructions and paperwork. So, we have the collector club flyer, which is not going to be any use to me because I'm not in the club anymore. I may rejoin it in the future, but you know, I'll think about that. Then we get the consumer guarantee and how to care for your locomotive. So put that to one side. And here we get the what I like to call the spares list because it is mostly to do with the spares. But it also tells you how to run it in and detailings and where to fit the chip. There is actually one curious thing though with this particular class 20, or at least the instructions given for the class 20, this particular one, with domino headboards. Because on the back it mentions putting head code discs on. This class 20 does not have the head code discs, so why they gave it this instructions is beyond me. But there you go. It would have been nice to put different instructions on, but that's probably Batman just being lazy. It also tells you where to put the details, which is mainly the buffer beam parts, really. And stuff about DCC on board models, including sound and the body removal, but I don't really care about that, to be honest. Cause it's not going to be that much use to me anyway. So, they'll put to one side. We'll bring the rest of the packaging into shot. And we'll take off this plastic case. Move that out of the way. And as you can see, it was £73, but I got it for 57 Plus 60p. So that is a really good price. If you think about it. And it's brand new as well. So I'll bring the packaging back into shot, and we'll look at the details. Which are pointlessly sellotaped onto the packaging. I don't really see much of a point to that. But anyway, we'll just fold the sellotape back. And so, what have we got? Well, it's mainly the above beam details, such as the vacuum pipes and cables, and sandboxes. I might not put all of them on, because it will limit moving on the bogies. But, you know, they, they can go into the spares box if I don't use them. And they can still be useful on other things as well. Right, now all we need to do is open up the rest of the packaging. And so, just open up the flap, lift up the top, push the flat top down, and just carefully lift it out. And so here we have the Class 20 chopper in its entirety. I'm just close the packaging back up to save me doing it later. Now, I have actually washed my hands. As silly as it may sound, I've done it because it stops me getting grubby fingerprint marks on the model and having to wash them off later. Because it is a job, and I've got enough on my plate at the moment without having to rub the fingerprints off. So that's why I've done it. And I've done it in past reviews, like I've said, for the exact same reason. But anyway, and there she is. Wow. Well, what can we say about her? Well, for starters, if you haven't got one of these, why not? Because no layout is complete without at least having one of these, or in my case, several. Like I said before, you can never have too many choppers. <laughs> and they are a really unique class of diesel locomotive, in the sense of they only have one cab. Which was the only problem with these locomotives. They only had one cab. But it's what made them unique, you see. But anyway, so, onto the model. There's a lot of weight on it. It really is heavy. But then, it has no traction tyres. But then, name a model from Batman that does. And the answer is none. Because it doesn't need any. Because the weight is there to create the traction. Which is the reason. We also do have them sockets as well, so you can replace the couplings if you want to, or take them out. I won't, because these run in pairs, or quadruplets, or even triplets, from time to time. 
so I'm going to leave both in there because it would be much better for that purpose we've got detail on the buffer beam as well which is nice we've got a hook for a chain link coupling to go on and you can see the little holes where the detail has to go we also have sprung buffers on both ends which is a really nice touch but then again you're only going to be messing about with them like I am now when you're holding the model because you're not going to touch them when the model is running on the track and they are actually a realistic size for what the class 20 should have in real life because the Hornby ones have ridiculously so small buffers I'm not sure what that was about also now we do get some painted bogey detailing it's mainly the piping on the bogies the axle boxes are left out but at least some bits on the bogies have been painted for a change because it really does make it look nice and besides you can paint some more bits on here if you want to so it's not really a major problem and then even the fuel tank is detailed as well just look at that we also do have doors as well now they don't open but bear in mind Batman don't do this sort of thing but they did trial the opening door thing with their class 37's I don't know which batch they did it and how many class 37's they did with opening doors but the only one I'm aware of that had opening doors was 37419 in intercity livery and it's a shame that they didn't put the opening doors on there but then that does not automatically make a model bad there's also a handle on the door there which is a nice touch and nice metal handrails there's glazing in all the cab windows like there should be and wipers on the windows and the proper ones and they're not just daft moulded bits of plastic like Lima and Hornby use ones to do also the running number 2136 is crisply printed on the side as well as the dialogue as well as you can see on the cab under the number also we have a warning sign at the top there even though they don't use overhead and we do have separate handrails on the front there as you can see which is a really nice touch considering Hornby's are basic and only just have metal handrails down the sides they really do lack detail I've said this before Batman's class 20's are the best you can buy on the market because Hornby's are naff in a sense of the size of the buffers and detail and the fact of the biggest problem that they've done with them is they made only one class 20 with domino headboards and they also gave no head code discs for the head code disc class 20s why they did that I don't know but then the Lima models weren't perfect and I should know because I many many years ago back when I was little did have a Lima class 20 you know the models aren't very good and the Lima class 20s they were actually inches too short to what they should have been in reality but back to the Batman model as you can see separate handrails on the front there which is a really nice touch and you have metal handrails that go down the sides there and what's really unique about these they run down the sides and extend at the front which I think is really nice and they're stainless steel as well and they're really shiny as well just look at that just wait for the camera to focus a bit just look at the shine reflecting from the lights on that it's a really nice touch and also at the nose end we have another separate hand drone on the front there we have another warning sign another domino headboard and you also get lamp irons here as well as strange as that might be they are actually lamp irons as I've just found that out they are different to what they'd usually be but they are lamp irons trust me though you could weather them if you wanted to you also get steps at the front there as well and at this end here which is a really nice touch you have a BR logo, the small logo on both sides there is detailing in the cab but it's just not painted but then you're not going to see much of it anyway and you've got lovely etched grills as well that have a nice texture to them 
being these grills here and this nice big grill here. And these here as well. Oh, sorry about the lens cap then. So the grills are nicely detailed. And you've got all these panels here as well that's run down along the body with handles on, which is nice. They don't open up, but then at the end of the day, do they really need to open up? No. Because if they did, it might make the model a bit more expensive and it would just open up to see the mechanism inside. Which would be a little bit pointless anyway. They're there, and that's all that matters. And then there, I'm not sure which one it would be, but I think either that one or that one is for where the fuel goes. But either way, they're there, like they should be, which is nice. And you've got the running plate as well, which is painted black, like it should be. Then if you turn around to the other side, dodgy focus there. So if you turn around to that side, you have more panels and etch grills. The handrail that runs down the side again. And another BR logo, which is very nice. And some more handrails here as well. And another door, like there should be. And then the roof, there's actually rivets on the roof as well, which is really nice. Because, you know, it makes the model stand out a bit more and more realistic. And there's panels on the roof as well. And there's exhausts where all the clag and the diesel fumes will come out of. And you could weather this if you wanted to. And I might do that with this one. And there's also a grill at the top there. I don't know if there's a fan underneath, but it's hard to see the fan. But, you know, that's not too much of a major problem anyway. Because in reality, you wouldn't see the fans that much anyway under the grills. And even if there was a fan under there, it wouldn't spin anyway, because Batman don't do that. But... She is a fantastic model. I don't know if she's going to have working lights, though. We'll have to see in a second when we put her on the track. Because when Batman first brought out their 20s, they didn't have any working lights. And that was being the original batches. However, given this is a more recent one, because it has the new star packaging, then it might have working lights. I don't know. But she's just really stunning. I just can't fault her yet. We need to see how she runs. And this will get a benefit perhaps from a slight touch of weathering. I don't know if I do it on this one. I'll weather the exhausts and the buffers. And I may or I may not put a few stain marks down there and there. I don't know if I do it like I say on this particular one because I want to keep it a bit more cleaner. But, you know, because, you know, 20s, in reality, they weren't always well looked after. Because, you know, they're dirty just because to show that they've been working hard. Pulling trains and the clag and the diesel fumes go everywhere. I don't want it to be like the other BR Blue 20 I have, where I put stain marks down all the sides here. You can still see the BR Blue in it, and that's the way I like it. In fact, I will get it to show you, to see what I mean. And so here is that said chopper that I've just been talking about. You can still see the BR Blue livery on it. It's just that it has these stain marks all down the sides here. And on the roof. And on the running frame there. But you know, this is the way I like it and this is the way I wanted it to be. And so that's why I've done it. And I think it looks really realistic when 20s from Batman are weathered. And I've also weathered the BR green one as well, that I'll quickly show you. As you can see, now this one has some different weathering. It has a few weathering stains on the sides here. Oh, there's a grubby mark there. So I took care of that. Yeah, there's a few grubby marks on here. But it's mostly on the underframe and on the roof. And on the ends as well, as you can see. But I wasn't aiming for a completely weathered 20 on this one though, just some, because it looks nice. So yeah, 
this class 20 will get some weathered on it. Well, some weathering on it, should I say. Come on, speak proper English. But it won't have as much weathering as this one. It will be sort of like this one. Except in the case of this one, I'm only going to weather the exhaust on the roof, weather the buffers, and leave the underframe, and possibly weather the, that side there, and that side there. But anyway, for now, let's put her on the tracks and see what she's like, because we need to run her. Right, so here we are at the track, and we are putting the chopper onto the rails. So I'll just zoom in on the camera a bit. There we go. Do excuse the joint hands coming in. But they have to be, so I can get it on the rails. So, she's now on. We'll zoom out a little bit, and... When the camera decides to finally focus, we'll give us some juice. Now, considering this is the first time she's ever been ran, she's running quite well actually. She doesn't have any working lights though, but then you can actually fix them yourself because there is a video on YouTube that shows you how to fit lights to class 20s like this one. And the lights, they don't really let it down because they don't automatically make the model bad. Either that or maybe there are lights but they're too faint to see in the daytime. Right, so here she is, coming out of the tunnel and there has been some more recent stuff going on the layouts. as you will notice, such as the signal box which we now finally have on. The stations had not much done to it other than these benches with people on them. All except that one there. It's alone and needs some people. But it will do soon. Brown is still looking pretty much the same for now. And here we have a shed in the diesel depot. And I do hope to have a shed there as well, shortly. And then down here we've got some really rather exciting going on. I won't reveal any more now until in the future, or soon in your case, but what is going on, the a Tunnel with an Arrow Gauge Railway project has actually now been cancelled. It's been knocked on the head. And so the videos have been removed. But there is an exciting, well there is a more exciting project on the go at the minute, which is this. I won't reveal any more about it until later, which will be in a future video. And then we have the windmill still sat here, which will eventually go somewhere over there. There, hopefully. You can see all the engaged track there. But anyway, enough of my lecture about the layout and what I've done on it. It's the class 20. Coming past here again. Passing over the level crossing before going back into the tunnel.
right, so we know it's a smooth runner, even though it lacks working lights, but I don't really care about that. Because that's not really a major issue, in my opinion. And it's just simply stunning. But we're not done with it yet. Not in this video, anyway. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get it pulling a train, which will be of these oil tanks parked up in the siding. So first we need to drive it out of shot. And what we're going to do now is to drive the Class 09 out of the shed. And she's going to shunt these oil tanks out. Because it's a shunter, that's what they do. And that's what they're all built to do and designed for. Another point has still been hand changed, but that'll be sorted out when the layout is done. Like I said before, trust me. So there it goes. It's making its way out. And now it's going to shunt them onto this track. So now we'll drive the class 09 out of the way. And we'll park it back into the depot. It will be a better depot when it's finished. But you know it's still under construction. And so now, we'll be in the class 20, back. Okay. So she's coupled on. Take it away 20.
there's only one word that can possibly sum this logo up. Amazing. I just can't fault it. Not even the fact that it doesn't have any working lights is a problem to me. Because you can fix them with your own in any way. But you know, it's just simply stunning. Smooth runner. It's a great puller, if you take my meaning. And it's just stunning. Especially detail wise. Superb.